Guy Kawasaki, tech influencer and Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to the Mercedes-Benz booth here at CES. I'm Guy Kawasaki. Uh, a little bit about my background. I used to work for Apple. I was Apple's chief evangelist and software evangelist. Uh, this meant that I spread the good news about Apple and all its products. Um, you know, the word evangelism comes from Greek news, meaning bringing the good news. So in my role at Apple, I was bringing the good news of Macintosh, uh, democratizing computing, if you will. Today I am the chief evangelist of a company called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, out of Sydney, Australia, and we are in the business of democratizing design to make it so that anybody can create great graphics. However, uh, today's hat is a Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador. So the brand ambassador program of Mercedes features uh, very well-known athletes, uh, entertainers, uh, for example, Roger Federer is a brand ambassador. Uh, if you're into big wave surfing, i.e. 80-foot waves and Mavericks, there's Garrett McNamara. Uh, and then there's me, and I haven't quite figured out, or maybe Mercedes hasn't quite figured out that I'm not a world-class surfer or athlete or entertainer, but I can evangelize. So that is my role. Uh, definitely being a Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador is in the category of jobs of, you know, somebody's got to do this job. So this means that I can basically drive any Mercedes and it's a real fun job. It's, a, it's not thankless, it's really a great job. So uh, my role here today is to act as a moderator. Uh, we've had, let's see, five of these inspirational talks. We have three more, eight over the past two days. And the purpose of these inspirational talks is to give you an insight into both industry developments as well as Mercedes-Benz specific developments and directions. Now, the framework for Mercedes-Benz going forward is an acronym called CASE, C-A-S-E. -E. And as you can see from this diagram, uh, the C stands for connected, the A stands for autonomous, uh, the, e, the S stands for shared, and the uh, E stands for electric. So those are the four key parameters of Mercedes going forward. So each, each of these particular talks uh, covers one of these topics. And uh, one of the most important aspects uh, to make case work is artificial intelligence. Uh, it takes a great deal of intelligence for the for the autonomous drive, for optimization of electric cars, all those kinds of things. So the topic of this particular presentation is the impact, the effect of AI on automobiles. And in order to do that, I have two very distinguished speakers. Now the first speaker is from Mercedes-Benz, Sajad Khan. He's the head of digital vehicle and mobility. And the second speaker is Jensen Wong from NVIDIA. So please uh, welcome my two guests here. Jensen is that he's a very shy person, so we're going to have to like get him to come out of his shell. Um, I also learned that you really, in this industry, you don't really need to say his last name. He's like, just say Jensen, it's like Madonna, like Prince. So this is the CEO of NVIDIA, and so John here, he's our man for AI and Mercedes Benz. So let's start, okay? So let's start with our friend from Mercedes-Benz. And I guess the question is, you know, there may be skeptics in the world that say, well, you know, we've been hearing this term AI for about 30 years, and now AI is being thrown around in the car business. So is it just a buzzword? I mean, what are the real implications? What are the real uses of AI in cars? I mean, for Mercedes-Benz, AI, it has been important for us all the time, and what we are talking about is we are talking about some kind of a thing which we are really implementing together with our partners over there. In this case, for example, if you look at it in our vehicles which are standing out over there, you have to buy kind of a real use cases, either they are based on 
to decide about your contextual information in the firm, or it decides about the prediction that okay, what you did yesterday or in the last week, and to bring those kind of things down the road. And what we are doing is for those kind of things is we know that there is one side that we need an excellent software, but on the other side we also need some kind of a computational power. If you have the great computational power, then you can really do the things in a way that it comes very natural to the user. And this is where we are working very closely together with the NVIDIA and the Jensen, where we are saying we have great computational power, we have great support from their side, and based on that one, we are offering to our customers some kind of features which sounds and looks very natural, but they get across to a technology which is immensely important. So how about giving us three or four examples? So I'm driving along 101 in my S class. And what's the What's the ramification of AI? How am I going to experience AI, even though I may not know it's AI? But like, what, what just made it better? Okay, for example, today's car, if you look at it the other day, you have to, and when you enter into the car, you enter, uh, I would like to go to San Francisco. You either have to do it over a speech, or you have to touch screen and all those kind of things. And now that we have the car over here in the C-Class, which we are showing, and we are launching that within three months, which we are showing is that okay, the car gets to know your behavior on its own, and then afterward, it brings you early in the morning or whenever you leave to a next destination, based on the whole kind of algorithms we are having on the back and the computational power, it suggests you something automatically on its own. And based on that suggestion, you just have to say, yes, I would like to do an action. And then every day in the morning or whenever you leave for any kind of place, this is the same is true for music and all those kind of things. Same is true with your driving behavior also. That when you are going across the curve and when the car knows always at that point in time you are not as good as you should be compared to a very inexperienced driver, then also it takes over at that point in time. So this is a kind of artificial intelligence the machine learning which we are implementing and we are not talking. Can't. We are bringing something on the road in the real way. So that's why there are some examples standing out here also. And we are bringing incrementally down the road in the next cars also. Okay, so now Jensen, Yo. I love the NVIDIA story, but <laughs> I, I would like you to explain to people, like, I think many people think NVIDIA gaming, NVIDIA gaming. Well, you know, this is not a gaming convention, this is not a gamer's food, so what is NVIDIA? What, what, what's, what, explain this to me, how you went from one to the other, are you in both, how does this all work? Well, our company's been around for 25 years almost. And for this entire history, we dedicated ourselves to working on the most extreme computing platforms in the world. And it turns out that video games is essentially a real-time virtual reality simulation. It's the most virtually real um, experience that we have. And the simulation that it takes in order for video games to be amazing uh, is some of the most computationally intensive and algorithmically rich uh, computation we know. And so we dedicated ourselves in, entirely to that. Now, several years ago, we had a huge breakthrough. Uh, working on a new type of algorithm called deep learning, we were able to solve one of the greatest challenges of artificial intelligence, which is the perception of the world. It's the perception of the world. To what is incredibly easy for you and I to just look at what's happening, recognize what's happening around you, um, distill that and construct a mental model of your environment so that you can reason about it and take action from it, I'm it turns so, out that that's incredibly hard. I'm not so sure that humans are that good at that. <laughs> I, I can think of some politicians who could use a NBA yeah, chip. There's that's, that. a, that's a whole thing. Well, we have to infuse a little bit of artificial intelligence into them. Yeah. Well, yeah. this breakthrough okay. called deep learning, this breakthrough called deep learning happened several years ago. And it, it has completely revolutionized computing. Um, all the way from, uh, from the way that you speak to your phone now, so that you can make natural language queries of your, of your phone, uh, to when you guys uh, take photographs and you upload it into the cloud, and it automatically tags it for you and automatically sorts it for you. And when you look for a particular photograph, it kind of magically shows up. Um, all of that is <coughs> possible as a result of artificial intelligence. Several years ago, uh, we had the great privilege of meeting Sajat, and we started to work together with Mercedes-Benz to bring artificial intelligence into the automotive industry to revolutionize the driving experience. Right? And so if you take a look at, look at um, and, and, and we spoke to a lot of companies, but we connected very, very quickly with Mercedes-Benz because it turns out that Mercedes-Benz already has a very significant internal artificial intelligence development 
to bring this capability to revolutionize cars. And so when our teams connected together, there was instant chemistry, and we uh, share a common vision about how AI could change our driving experience and make it more enjoyable, make it easier, make it safer. And so we started to develop AI car concept uh, for Mercedes-Benz, and that's been several years now. So uh, again, now I'm driving down 101, my S-Class, and I'm thinking, oh, this is a great experience, but what specifically should I be thinking of? Thank you, Jensen, for making this happen. What exactly are you doing in that S-Class? So the first thing that you have to realize is that your S-Class has eyes all around it, and it's paying attention all the time, and it never gets tired and it's operating at a very high performance. And so it could sense and understand and perceive its environment all the time in real time. The second thing is inside your S-Class, there are sensors all over the cabin and all over the cockpit. And so even the cockpit is sensing the driver and the passengers. And so by just having alertness about the environment, alertness about the driver, the S-Class, could drive pilot you, or if you're not in self-driving mode, <laughs> it could look out for you. And so at all times, at all times, your Mercedes-Benz in the future will either assist in you in driving, uh, drive for you, or uh, keep you out of harm's way and pay attention on your behalf. And so one of the things that Sajat said is, is um, uh, if the car knew that you were about to make a maneuver, uh, that would put you in harm's way or put somebody else in harm's way, it would prevent you from doing that. And so this artificial intelligence car, this assistant of yours, this partner of yours, um, is, is uh, become your co-pilot, okay? So Mr. John, what are the challenges to make this dream come true? I think the main challenge which you see is that, okay, where you have to see, you have lots of puzzles available out in the market, and there are different kind of words which you could use, either it's autonomous or connectivity or data IoT and all those kind of things, that how do you take the best technology out from there and you incorporate in a partnership in a way that you get a successful product out there where the customer says, really, I need it. One is to have a technology out there, different puzzles, and how you bring them together like Lego parts. And this is where we are working at the moment, and I can be very, uh, I'm very proud of it in saying that also, that within the 12 months, we are rolling out together with the NVIDIA, together with the Jensen team, a product out there in the market, and which will be a great one in seeing all these kind of things out for the buzzwords which you mentioned before, whether it's an internet of things, it's an artificial intelligence, it's a connectivity, it's a big data, as a combination of all things under the word digitalization, bringing a product on the road which will just turn the whole thing that we are talking about. So this is what I'm saying. The challenge at the moment is the main, how do you partner with the companies in a way so closely and the team between us and the Jensen and the Mercedes-Benz team is working so close at the moment that we are able to create a product where the customers would say, well. I mean, you got to think about this, the excitement about this partnership. Uh, Mercedes-Benz and NVIDIA shared this common vision about the AI car. It started three years ago. This year, people are talking about AI. At this point, it is very, very clear AI is going to be the future of computing. At this, at this point, it is clear AI is going to revolutionize the future of automobiles. But this is an endeavor that we started three years ago and that we're going to put on the road next year. So unbelievable. I, I have a real practical question, part of my ignorance. So we have a, you know, we have a customer, we have a supplier. <laughs> How do you call it? Yes, okay. that, that would be the wrong understanding. Okay, sorry. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> if you know me that one, like that kind of a relation, which the, maybe the industry was having before, yeah. that doesn't work anymore. Oh. So you've got to put that on the side. See, so I think that on purpose. Only when you are partners. Okay. When you are close okay, 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 you're partners. Partner. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and then you can bring the great product. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. The reason for that is because in order to turn a car into an AI, you can't just buy a box, install it, and then it becomes well, that's an AI. What How does yeah. it really work? That's right. What are you telling me you need? I think we have the teams which are sitting very close to each other. 
we would not uh, say that all the secrets that we are doing, giving into the market. But the fact is our team is very closely located with each other. We have an office in Sunnyvale over there. So we have an engineering team which is working on the closely with the product and the team with the, from the Jensen. Jensen has also the team in Stuttgart with which we are working very closely. And we are working not on such kind of a thing like if there is a supply of such kind of a thing. On every level, on a chip and the software which we are getting and all those kind of a thing in a holistic way, the team is like it's a one project team working together. And one thing I should also tell you, it's not kind of a one feature or one set or one product. It's a long-term thing which we are working together with NVIDIA. We are in the long frame, in the long run, together with NVIDIA to say, okay, how can we bring the best on the market as a team together? Yes, yeah, so John's saying something that's really important. It used to be the case that the way cars are built are system integrated with a lot of functional components. The way that, that Mercedes-Benz and Sajad architected this car, it started out with a computing platform. There's an architecture of the computer. There's the processor of the computer that we're building. There's the system software and all the algorithms that sits on top of it. There's a vision about what this car can do today, but what it can do someday. Because as you know very well, a computer evolves and gets better all the time. And that is all about the software development and evolution and by using artificial intelligence, this car will learn from its experience. It will learn over time and get better and better throughout your entire life of the ownership of the car, which is pretty fantastic. That's right. And I mean, all those kind of technologies which we are talking about over the air updates and all those kind of things. So even if the car would be out in the field, we will still be working together on bringing more and more features, use cases, however you name them, even if the car is out in the street. It was a revolutionary technology for a new car. It was a revolutionary way of designing cars together. And I think, I think the, uh, I think the, the, the customers of Mercedes-Benz are going to enjoy a revolutionary driving experience as a result of it. You should be a brand ambassador, man. I mean, I, I'm your, I'm your partner here. <laughs> I, I'm, your, I'm, your, I'm, your, I'm your wingman. I can see that. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, any questions from the audience? I think we have a few minutes. All right, so we'll get a mic to you. Uh, one quick question. Do you elaborate, first of all, on the C-Class you pointed to as an example, and then you also said you'll be bringing out an AI car uh, with NVIDIA's help in the next 12 months. What's the difference between what's coming within 12 months and what's in the C-Class? Can you elaborate, explain better the C-Class? I didn't quite understand. Thank you. Okay. So from the real end use cases, what's coming back in, in within the 12 months, let's keep the surprise when we will announce. We are working on the technology together. This is what's already out there. On the C-Class, which we see at the moment is, there's a, like three kind of things. We have a strategy of saying, how can we give one thing which is constant for every human on the earth? That one is 24 hours a day. The only thing which is limited to everyone is, and we are saying, how can we give you 26 hours a day? What we mean with that one is that how can we give you more prediction, more kind of a use cases in the why that when you leave the office, for example, at 7 p.m., you have a choice. Either you sit another one hour in your office and work on your emails, calendars, and all those kind of things, or you just get into your car, use the best technology in the car, and the so-called, we call it in-car office, while even driving, that you can work on those things, and by the time you get home in the next 30 to 40 minutes, that you get it done. So what you see over there, at the moment in the c clusters is all kind of a prediction is in that, and all kind of in-car office capabilities which we are building in. And again, it will be an incremental approach. We will go step by step, and just wait for a little bit of surprise what's coming in the t Oh, wait, 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 have one second. What might it offer you based on the AI? Like go home, go to Starbucks, what would it be offering? <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's a, for example, in the, from the AI perspective, what you see at the moment is that it may, uh, if you look at any other cars at the moment out there, you have to, if you would like to look for a gas station or something like that, you really have to go inside the menus and all those kind of things. You have to look at the prices, you have to open the apps and all those kind of things. That's what we are not doing. I mean, the, what we have launched now with the E-Class also at the moment, what you see is that the system tells you when you need it. This is the intelligence. The system tells you based on the current prices out there, what is the best price for you, based on the best distance, and based on your driving behavior, and based on also 
where we have given the destination. So all those kind of artificial intelligence kind of components which we are building in step by step, these will be the features which we have for the customers. I saw one more question back there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you about the computing environment for cabin artificial intelligence and autonomous driving? So, do you put uh, cabin AI capabilities and autonomous driving capabilities run on same computing platform, or do you provide a separate environment for cabin AI and autonomous driving? There's, there are a lot of considerations when it comes to um, architecting a future AI car. And as you mentioned, there are several uh, major functionalities that are associated with it. One of the functionalities is the piloting functionality, the driving functionality. It has to be, uh, it has to perceive the environment, understand uh, what is happening in the environment, predict what's going to happen in the environment, and perform the right functions. The second major functionality is the in-cabin interaction and support of the driver. We call that a co-pilot. And the third, it's natural language interactions with the car. So it should recognize your voice, it should speak back to you in, in a natural and human way, and it should also understand what you mean, not just what you said. And so there are many different ways to turn on the radio, there are many different ways to ask where the next Starbucks is, and so it needs to have a natural language understanding. These three functionalities are all very important to the future of AI. The architecture of the computer, the first thing you have to do is you have to start with a supercomputer in the car. And that's one of the things that Mercedes did an incredibly good job, architecting a computer that is the most powerful computer a car has ever seen. And so a supercomputer in the car, and the rest of that, enormous amount of complexity that goes along with it. All right, how about one last question? Come on, it's the CEO and oh, where? Oh, yeah. Uh, wait for the mic. Uh, hi, Jensen. Just a question about the uh, uh, artificial intelligence supercomputer you just mentioned. Uh, what's the difference between your supercomputer and the Intel? So, and also your partnership with Bosch. I think you are missing a part of algorithm and the data you collect from the uh, car OEMs. So how can you deal with this type of problem? Well, first of all, our our car computing platform. The NVIDIA AI car computing platform was designed with one purpose and one purpose only, which is to create an AI car supercomputer. There are no other applications for it. It's about integrating uh, a large number of very high resolution, very high performance sensors. It's about the ability for real time throughput. The system software environment is designed completely differently, and it runs artificial intelligence networks. And so this computer was designed with one singular purpose, which is the AI car supercomputer. As far as the amount of data that we need, you're absolutely right. It's the fact of the matter is, in order for us to operate uh, an artificial intelligence car, the the interaction and the and the learning of the passengers' uh, preferences is something that that um, uh, is rich with software and it's incredibly complicated. And that's one of the areas that Sajad and his team and the Mercedes-Benz uh, team are really, really focused on. And then it has to be connected to the cloud, of course, for constant on-air updates and uh, being able to be connected to a high-definition map. And Mercedes-Benz is a world-class company and it sells globally. And so it has to be able to interact with roads and environments that are all over the world. And so this is, a, this is you know, when I think about, when I think about the endeavor, uh, of what we started with Mercedes-Benz three years ago. It is, when I, when I first started thinking about it, it was the single most complicated computing platform the world had ever conceived of. And the fact that we're this close to launching this platform and the vision of what will come after that, uh, there is no now question in my mind that we work together to create the world's most complex supercomputing platform. And it's going to, it's going to, uh, uh, it was created to serve all the passengers and all the drivers in the world. Do, do you think we'll come to a day where we'll be saying, why did we ever think humans could drive a car? 
we should have always had computers driving along. Right? I mean, there's so much data that a computer can handle that a human cannot. So. Sure. I mean, of course, I mean, that would be the point. And, then, and that would also, I mean, the technology brings a lot of like, kind of uh, luxury and lots of benefits to the humanity. And at the moment, and that's, uh, as you also mentioned uh, before, also, that okay, the people at the age of like 70, 80, when they say, I know I cannot drive the car anymore. And then they say, okay, and that for long, you're that kind of transportability from A point A to point B. So that's why the autonomy is important. And as the Jensen was mentioning also before, I mean the computational thing which we are talking and working together with the media on the architecture side, we call them in four different letters, which we call it C A S E. We call it whether it's all kind of the use cases for connectivity, whether it's we are talking about something in the direction of A autonomous whether we are talking about something which is great on the area of sharing or we are going in the direction of electrification. So if you have a great architecture down there, you can combine all those four letters in an efficient way in a, that the customer would have a car, Mercedes Benz, together with the media, where you would say, really, I see the benefits every day in my driving. Okay. Now, uh, I know that this is going to come up on social media, so let's just handle it now. So I bet people are going to ask, who makes this jacket? This is a jacket that is custom made only for Jensen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like Madonna, I like that Jensen. Jensen. Right, right. So please uh, join me in thanking Jensen Arjad for this discussion on AI. And all